pretty one, Ulysses. Hello booktube, I'm Sean the Bookman here. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am outside again. I think this is a new park. I thought when I walked in it was the one park that I filmed in, like the bloody fool that I was filming outdoors in July or whenever that was. But now that I look a little more closely, I don't recognize very much. And this is about a seven minute walk from my house, so I'm pretty happy that it's got a bench with nothing ugly in the background. Just, just green stuff. The pigeons are flapping their wings, but there's not a lot of noise at 8 o'clock in the morning on Friday, and here I am. But it looks like it could rain at any minute, so did I bring an umbrella? No! I'm lugging this big microphone around, but uh, with Victober I don't have any physical books. So it's all ebooks or audio, so I didn't have much else to cart around. So here goes nothing. I'm feeling a lot better, thank you. Uh, hope to be completely fine uh, very soon, but certainly uh, pretty much back to normal. So, fingers crossed that that continues. And I'm having a great time with Victober. I've only had one bad experience, so why don't we start with that? Let's accentuate the negative, shall we? And then move on to what's mostly very been had a gorgeously stimulating reading week with Victober since when was that? Started Monday. So I haven't finished any books. But I do have one bale to tell you about, and that was the Welsh lesbian novel, Jill, by Amy Derwin. So that was uh, funny and disappointing. I'd really been looking forward to it and doing the buddy read with Charlotte of Tired Mama Tries to Read. But I only read about seven pages, and I almost wanted to puke. The writing was awful, just terrible. So I'm going to give you a sample because it was unreadably bad. Uh, Charlotte basically agreed with me, although she, you know, toned her critique down 17 notches from my little rant. Um, and she has elected to continue because she's interested in the story, and that's great. The story, perhaps, I didn't get very far enough to judge, but I just couldn't get past the prose. I usually can't. So I'm gonna uh, read you two sections. I'm gonna read uh, uh, both about a paragraph. One is from Jill by Amy Dillwyn, published in 1884. And just to be clear, Amy Dillwyn w wrote in English. And then I'm going to share a passage from the book that I replaced it with, which had been my first choice for this prompt, the prompt about uh, reading a book with a proper name in the title. And that was an 1885 novel written in the Welsh language. It's called Rhys Lewis, and it's was by Daniel Owen and he wrote in Welsh and this is 1885 translated in 2015 by Stephen Morris and both of these passages talk about the protagonists in the first person talking about their mother and I just want to share them to show the difference but I just want you to listen to the the difference in the language because I think you'll see immediately why I abandoned one and picked up the other so first, from Jill by Amy Dillwyn. Was I born destitute of the ordinary instincts of filial affection, in which case, be it observed, that it would be most unjust to blame me for what was simply a natural deficiency? Or is the fault of my defect in that way to be charged to my parents for having done nothing to develop the above-mentioned instinct? Anyhow, whatever the cause may have been, certain it is that they and I were mutually indifferent and never saw more of one another than we could possibly help. They went their way, and I went mine, and the less we came in contact, the better was I pleased. I regarded my mother as a sort of stranger whom the accident of inhabiting the same house caused me to see oftener than any other stranger, and who had an authority over me and my affairs which was decidedly irksome because our opinions as to what it was right and fitting that I should do or not do were always at variance with one another. Well, I just, I just can't handle that kind of prose. It sounds like a, under, a really bad undergraduate essay. <laughs> Decidedly irksome, mutually indifferent. 
the above mentioned instinct. Ah! <laughs> no, I can't read fiction that sounds like that. I don't care when it was written. So, no. Amy Dillwyn may have been many things, but based on the seven pages or whatever I read, she was not a writer. <laughs> she was not a very good writer. Okay, so moving on. So here is, the, and then again, this is a modern translation from the Welsh, but just listen to the difference in the language from Rhys Lewis by Daniel Owen. Ma'am was the most Methodist of Methodists, blessing to be on her. She clung fast to the faith and traditions of our fathers, and her most sacred belief was that we observe the Sabbath most strictly. On Sunday, ma'am wouldn't let me even speak of play, let alone look at a toy. I had to sit still and look serious all day. As a child, I couldn't tell one day and from another. Yet if I became restless or playful on the Sabbath, mother would insist that Jesus Christ was angry with me. She told me I shouldn't go to heaven. She said I was risking burning in the eternal fires of hell. This was hard for me to understand. If Jesus was fond of little children, as Ma'am said he was, why would he be angry if I played on a Sunday? I came to hate the coming of the Sabbath. I was sure I would offend Jesus again and so be cast into the fires of hell. What sort of a place is heaven? I asked Mother. My face fell when she said, a place where everyone keeps an everlasting Sabbath. I don't want to go there then, I said at once. My words hit her like a blow. Her face darkened and tears welled up in her eyes. I threw my arms around her neck. I'll go to heaven if you want me to, I said, but I hope Jesus Christ will let me play just a little when I get there. Okay, well, I just found that completely charming, and, and uh, I've now read maybe 7 or 10 percent of the novel, and it's, it's a very personable voice like that, and there's actually scenes and descriptions of people <laughs> instead of soul-destroying intellectual discourse. <laughs> so I'm enjoying it far, more, far better than the other one, and having a good time enjoying it very much. So that, uh, that was the, the one switcheroo, and uh, I think a very positive change in my TBR. Charlotte of Tired Mama Tries to Read doesn't hate me, and we're going to uh, try another buddy read, hopefully, very soon. So what else have I started? Quite a few. I have started Thomas Harding's Under the Greenwood Trees, and I'm doing it as an audio text combo. The audio book is really good. I don't have the name of the audio narrator in my head, but I'll put it in below. And it's, again, I would say charming. There has, so far, I'm not that far into it, but the, the story's just developing. And from what I hear, it's, it's an, perhaps an earlier work and doesn't have too much of a plot. It's kind of just a study of a, of a small little hamlet and, and the people, and I'm finding it, uh, I'm really enjoying it. Quite colorful. I have started on audio, but I'm occasionally following along in the ebook when I can do both. The Victober read-along of Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. I love it! Again, the audio is wonderful. It's really easy to listen to without getting distracted. Some audio narrators, and it's a very subjective thing for any audiobook reader or listener, what, which narrator you just click with, but I find it impossible to get distracted when I'm listening to her, and she does all the characters' voices and whatnot. Wives and Daughters is starting out really good and entertaining and the the uh, personalities of the characters especially the father uh, Molly's father just wonderful so I'm really really enjoying that that's probably the best experience so far 28 hours on audio so I have to uh, keep up with my daily allotment but it's uh, not a chore and I think the only other one that I'm currently reading is the Charlotte Young novel, The Heir of Redcliffe, and that's just on ebook. And that's a buddy read with Ange of Beyond the Pages, and it's going really well too. She is not a Jane Austen, but I'm really enjoying the writing, I have to say, and the story is unfolding very slowly. I'm reading a chapter or two a day, but Young really creates distinct characters, and I think what she's particularly gifted at is the whimsical conversations between various characters in the book. 
this is about uh, it's centered on one family and their orphaned nephew and then a more distant relative whose grandfather has just died and they're taking care of him now and there had been a multi-generational feud between the two families it's the Morville f clan which goes back to an actual historical personage who assassinated Thomas Beckett and down through the generations there's been a feud and the the family the novel thus far is centered on is a pr pretty easygoing, ha happy family and it's through the mother's family that there's the connection to this Morville and Guy Morville he's 17 years old and he joins the household but there's a lot of anxiety in the narrative about will the feud continue will there be some of that bad blood in Guy Morville even though he seems so sweet and a lot in the novel already about reading and uh, a lot of judgment about reading novels like Dombey and Son. <laughs> I can't remember exactly when this was published in the 1850s I think I'll put the if it's not correct I'll put it below but yeah I'm really enjoying it I think Ange is too and it's a bit of a puzzle uh, with lots of interesting turns of phrase and whatnot so that's going really well so yes I would say my Victober is going extremely well I'm going to fold in the rest of my Victober TBR gradually just as I get my health back completely so next week I'm just going to add one more I'm hoping to finish maybe before Monday my goal is to finish the Thomas Hardy under the Greenwood tree and then Monday I'm starting the my buddy read with Britta which is Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte I'm looking forward to that and then I've just got a couple more to add uh, in the rest of the month and keep up with these longer ones but I'm having a great time don't think I have much else to say I haven't felt like saying this for a while but I do this morning life is beautiful how about for you where you are what's up reading wise or otherwise thanks for watching